everybody. It's Fallon and Lily. We're doing a short little episode of We're Never Stuck because we wanted to share some recent insights from Fallon we thought would be really helpful if you want to share a little bit about what's going on. Yes, I'm first of all excited to be here. So I was having heart palpitations for a couple of weeks um, when I was really sick. So I had to go to the cardiologist and at first, like going through all that was pretty nerve wracking because like in my head, it was like, it's your heart. So like, I feel like your heart and your brain are like, really like, those are the most important things you need, right? To live. <laughs> so I was like super like scared when my doc, I went to my doctors to get checked out and my, like, logically I thought it's probably anxiety. And so I expected my doctors to tell me the same. Well, they did, but they also said, you know, let's get it checked out. Let's go to a cardiologist. So I went last week and the EKG was good, but he wants, he wanted me to do the halter monitor for a week. So now I have this on. And when I got there Friday, I was not really that anxious. Like I thought I was going to be a week prior, but now it's like, I just kept, so when you go in there, there's this picture, this huge iPad on the wall and it shows your heart. And like, you can like, move it around you can see all the blood vessels and everything and i was like how cool is that like how cool is it that they have doctors that can like see like inside your heart and make sure your heart is good so you're not you know because you could heart attack i don't know all the things so now that i got it on i'm thinking like how cool that i'm gonna see well i mean is this anxiety and honestly i've thought yesterday i'm like even if this isn't anxiety and it's something else it's getting it's gonna get taken care of like if there was something wrong, I can, maybe this is catch going to catch it before it got into something serious. And it just felt so cool that these, that they have this, that I can, that I'm able to do that. Cause I've had bouts of health anxiety for a really long time, like on and off. So I think if it was like two years ago, Fallon, it wouldn't, I would not be like this. I'd be like, it's heart disease. It's AFib. It's something, something I'm going to die. But now I'm just like, just having this experience with it. It's, is this weird? This is so weird to me. It's like exciting, but so like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just think it's so hopeful for people. And that's why I was excited when you were sharing your insights, because when it sounds like you're filled with gratitude, you know, which, yeah. um, but, and gratitude isn't something we can do. You know, I think sometimes when people hear about, okay, I'm going to just write down the things I'm grateful for. That doesn't really work because it's, um, I mean, unless it works for you, but like, you know, what, what, what I found is I didn't do it as a technique, but it would come like, whether it was my son having a, like, he had a time where he had to have a lot of dental work and I was filled with gratitude. Like, oh my gosh, I'm, how cool that there was a doctor who went to school to be a dentist for kids, you know, and that's what I, when yeah. I'm having, when I had, when I first went back to the dentist, I didn't force it, but was there, I was like, I was so grateful that I could afford to pay to go to the dentist. And then it was like, sometimes we just start that ball rolling of like, and every time without trying or almost every time I have similar thoughts. Like when I was getting my blood drawn, like, who thought, who created that they could get information from blood and, and also get it from this vein. So it's so fast. And I felt like you were filled with these thoughts of like, oh, wow, of, of gratitude about the advances in medicine and these doctors. And that just kind of raises our level of consciousness and we're in a good feeling. And, and then we have a totally different experience with, with our health because, um, I think like when we were messaging yesterday, it, it might sound so strange to people, but we're like, health doesn't have to be good or bad. It can be this opportunity. And that's where it felt like you were like, you also, when you were sharing to me, felt like you were, you just staying in the moment. You weren't getting ahead of yourself. You're like, well, this is what I'm doing now. And this is really cool. And I'm getting in more information and whatever, it, whatever it is. I'll have more information, whether cool, my heart, my heart's great, or here's this thing and, and let's deal with it. Yeah. I was thinking that too, when I, because I went to my parents' house last night, I'm like, it's hard to see dad. It could be this. And then I like was driving home. I'm like, well, what if 
I can, I'm the, so I'm listening to all like the three principles apprenticeship videos. So it's like, I am control of my thinking. Like I'm the creator of my thoughts. So am I going to sit here and like put myself in distress and make my heart feel worse because I'm going to add on all this thinking? Or am I just going to maybe, you know, if it's something it could get taken care of, if it's nothing, I don't feel like I've done this for nothing though, because I feel like I got my heart checked. I'm 34, you know, we're getting older and I feel like what's the harm in getting something checked out. Yeah. Yeah. One. So what I am also hearing from it is you're not wearing this heart rate monitor because you're really anxious and you need to see you're like, Oh yeah, the, the doctors recommended it and let me see. And, um, and also I mean, there's no nothing wrong if people have requested a heart rate monitor and they are doing it from anxiety. There's yeah. no right way to do it at all. Um, but I just kind of wanted to point that out. And also maybe we could hear a little bit more because I think that's really interesting where you are recognizing, wait, I get to decide what thoughts I bring to life, you know? And so, yeah, you might have that thought. It's heart disease. And then you realized, wait, I'm I get to decide which thoughts I give energy to and which thoughts I give life to. And that wouldn't really be, um, can you talk more about that? Yeah, that actually just came to me last night too. I was like, why did, wait, what? Cause I've been, so I'm watching all these videos and sessions. And I think Judy was saying something like your thoughts are like raindrops and, um, so I'm sitting there and like thinking about it. I'm like, Oh my God, she's right. If, I, if I'm going to sit here and be negative about this situation, I feel like one, it's going to make my anxiety worse because the doctor did say you'd be surprised how many people come here and get a halter monitor and it's just their anxiety and I was like oh so that right there put me I'm not alone yeah so if it's from that he also thought it was from my the medication that I was on so I mean that actually I just thought how cool is that I was on this meds that I've never taken before and my body was like this isn't good for you. You know what I mean? How cool is that? My body was able to give me that type of feeling to be able. And then I, cause I got off that right away after a couple of days, I yeah. just thought, had that thought. That's kind of neat. Like That's... your body really does like tell you, like, this is just like a little signal. This isn't good for you or you're caught up or you're just, you know, you're in it too much right now. Yeah. I love that. That's such a beautiful way to look at it because I think sometimes it can freak people out. They can be really afraid to take medication. I don't want to have a negative reaction, but there it's like, well, all it is, is your body giving you feedback. You know, everything our body does is intelligent. You know, I, I have a medication that I take, but when I try to take, I take like two of the pills a day. Um, but if I, I can go up to three, but now I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could do it again, but I took it right after I got COVID two years ago, it's for diabetes. And when I take three, I just feel, I felt really bad, but it was my body like, and it was, um, I just didn't feel good. And I remember saying to my like endocrinologist, then I messaged him, he's like, oh yeah, just go back down to two. And I'm like, oh, so I think it's like my body being like, Th that's, this is the limit. Um, but yeah. it's, you know, it, it's, um, I think it's such a beautiful way to look at it of like how cool that our body's like, nope, don't love this medication or no, don't love this dose. And our body tells us that, you know, um, yeah. Where it's, it's love letters. That's like my friend who she was quitting smoking and she did the patches and she had to go like, she wants to like, it was just too much. The 21 milligrams. That's just too much. And it's just now that I, your body really does send you love letters. Like this is too much for me. This is too much for, it's like a, you're in a relationship with it. It's too much for us. We can't do this. Like we got to take a smaller dose or change something. Yes. Yeah. And, and what I'm, and what I know, what I'm curious if you think, and you don't need to be anxious to, um, to get the messages from your body. Like we don't need to be hyper vigilant of like, Oh my God, well, you, you, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, I think, um, yeah. I work with a lot of people that it can feel irresponsible to not be worried about their health. It can feel irresponsible not to like obsess and scan and like, well, okay. So if my body's going to send me messages, it's like, you know, you've been having these insights about your health and taking great care of your health. Um, not in a super anxious state, you know, you've been yeah, having, that's how it used to be. 
Yeah. Like any, any little thing, I was at the doctor. And then there was a period of time where I didn't go to the doctor because I don't want to know if I'm going to die. Like, I would just everything. But now it's like, I, I don't really want to die right now. So if my body's trying to tell me something or just in general, like, I'm going to go get it checked out. Mm -hmm. And it was like when I got the blood work before I got the monitor. I didn't even think about that. I don't know why. It just... Before I would have obsessed and been in the portal, but I just waited. And the next day they called me. Everything was fine. I'm just anemic, which is fixable. I got gummies. So <laughs> I was so happy that I didn't spend that time obsessing over, oh my God, what if the red blood count is high? Or what if they see something in my thyroid? I didn't even think about the thyroid actually until just now. So, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool. Yeah. I what know that I think a little bit of it made it to stress. Like earlier I had some intrusive thoughts and I didn't even get into that. I'm just low right now. You know, I'm just, I don't, I know it's not affecting me like really mentally, but it is a little just, you know, just a health thing. So I'm just letting it be there. So that feels nice too. Yeah. Well, you can just let yourself be a human. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you know. Um, what do you think um, has made it possible for you to kind of have this change in in a health experience? The three principles. <laughs> it is absolutely mind-blowing. And it's like, it's really just it's just who like you are as a human. So I'm, I think I'm on like the third session. Like I already watched all the videos doing the apprenticeship, if I'm saying that correctly. So I'm on, I think my next, it's like a session now. Okay, yeah. So my next session that I'm going to watch is like Aaron Turner, which I, I love him. Me I too. love him. He's just like, just puts it into words and he just don't think too much about it. Don't, you don't think about it. If you're thinking about it, you're doing too much already. Yeah. So, I just, it's just so great because it's just, it's not like, and I love how Judy says that they look at it as all mental health is the same. And I remember you telling me that too. And it's like, yes. <laughs> and it's just so life changing. And I even had insights. So I feel like I need to work with addiction. I've never been addicted. Um, I have people that have had addiction problems in my family. But they need to learn the three principles because this could work. <laughs> this could work. This could help them, I feel. And I'm like, I got to get out there. I got to I gotta finish this. I got to learn this. And I got to get out there and I got to help these people. You know, that's what, like, I feel like learning the three principles does. You got to, you got to tell everybody. Yeah. I don't know where I went. <laughs> oh, I don't know, but you're back. Yeah, I'm back. It said this meeting shut off and then it said now it's being recorded oh oh anyway, if it cut me anyway. off i'm sorry but i oh, was just okay. saying like yeah well and is i think that how you felt when you first started like you just yeah when i found, first found the three principles understanding i was like and especially for me it was for anxiety and i was like oh my gosh why didn't anybody tell why does it isn't this way well known because it simplifies it and um and i maybe we can go into that next episode but we'll kind of yeah. leave here that what we are talking about you know or what i was hearing from you is is really when you understand how we work as human beings that changes everything across the board so that changes our experience of our thoughts and and when we can see it it's like it changes everything just full stop and i think that's what you've been seeing more and more um, is it doesn't have to just apply to anxiety or stress or panic attacks or intrusive thoughts. It's like relationships. And, um, and now I think you're seeing the potential for helping people with addiction and healing. And that is the amazingness of the three principles of it. It's because it's just truth. It's not a strategy. It's not anything. It's, it's just truth. And it's about how we work as human beings and it just touches every single area in that's the best in part yeah i remember too so it's gonna stick with me forever i don't i gotta find a way to get it tattooed or something so like the first thing that i keep like hearing and, and thinking about is sid said you cannot think yourself into wisdom i'm like i gotta get this tattooed on me 
that's so meaningful. And I don't know how to explain how it's so meaningful, but it is. And I just, it's going to be so good. Yeah. I feel like I can help everybody, but for some reason I got to get my foot in the door for addictions because what if everybody that's, that has a problem or is using is kind of like mental health and they're just really low. Yeah. Maybe they don't understand about being low and I got to be the one to tell them, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll stop this recording. We can continue our discussion on addiction. And I just wanted, I hope this was helpful for people because I know when you said, Oh, I have a heart rate monitor and I'm not alone or this halter monitor. And so I imagine there are people that are listening that are wearing it um, and to hear this different perspective that you, that you're having and this different feeling and different experience regarding, um, you know, because I do, I've been done videos when I haven't been anxious waiting for blood tests and people are like, how? And I think it's so powerful to hear it from someone else as well of, I hope people see how possible it is to, without trying to think your way, that you can yeah. have insights that will tr- change. You know, you didn't, you weren't, well, we'll talk more about that too, but like you, it's so possible for everybody to feel at peace waiting for test results. It's possible to feel at peace wearing a halter monitor. And it's not like you're like, oh yeah, I just have like rainbows and daisies in my mind. Sometimes you have a thought, it could be heart disease and you recognize what thoughts you what thoughts are helpful, which ones you want to bring to life. And so I just think it's really, really hopeful. And this is possible for everybody. So Fallon and I are amazing and special, but there's truly nothing different about us than anybody listening. So this is possible for every single person, every single person that's listening. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll see you all soon. <laughs> oh, sorry. What? Yes. Yeah. I said, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Yes, it's going to be okay. Well, we'll, we we can do a a follow-up with some updates too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye.